Let's start a California edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz, and we are joined today by Chad Mays. He is a new member of the California State Assembly, representing significant portions of, I guess, the Inland Empire. Yeah. Got a great district. Tell us the district. Sure, yeah. It's the 42nd Assembly District. It's uh, Riverside and San Bernardino County. About uh, a quarter of the population is in San Bernardino County, 75% in Riverside County. I've got the cities of Yucaipa, and if sure. we walk down the 10, Yucaipa, Cala Mesa, Beaumont, and Banning. Got it. I've also got Hemet and San Jacinto. And then I go down to the Coachella Valley, Palm Springs. We hop over nice. Cathedral City. Oh, you do? That's yeah. what, okay. So uh, then Rancho Mirage, right. Palm Desert, Indian Wells, La Quinta, my hometown of Yucca Valley, um, out to Tornine Palms. So I must ask, given the district is so large, I yeah. mean, that's a large geography, how are you managing to be that, that guy who serves the constituents? Well, and it's, you know, it's difficult, I got to yeah. tell you, because the, 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 there really are really four pockets, uh, four different right. communities, four different population bases of the, of the district, and it's tough to get around. Right. Um, we have a limited amount of budget, and we've got a few district staff, but um, it definitely is, is difficult. We do our best to, to try to get around, but there are always events and always uh, functions that, of we're, course. that we're missing. Yeah. I must ask as well. Well, you had worked for the county of San Bernardino for a member of the Board of Supervisors. I did. Now you're an elected. Yeah. It's a different beast. It's a different position. So how is that transition? It is interesting. You know, I was a, a, a council member and mayor. I served right. for and, eight and years well. in Yucca Valley. Right. Um, and so I was elected in a small uh, community, right. population about 20, 21,000 people. Then went to work for Janice Rutherford, who was the chair of the uh, first elected to the Board of Supervisors, right. went to work for her there. She became the chair of the Board of Supervisors in San Bernardino County. And a little different there, because now it's a county of 2.1 million people. Sure. Um, so then moving along, moving on, on to the state, yeah. where now we're, I'm on the governing board, um, um, of, yeah. which is the legislature of uh, 38 right. million people. The legislative so, branch. So, yeah, that's right. And so what do you make of it, uh, going from being a mayor of a small town, working for a county? I mean, you really now yeah. have seen all levels. Yeah. You know, municipal, county, and now state. I, uh, what do you think? You know, I've, I think it's given me a good perspective on things. When you're a, a council member, mayor of a small town, you know, you have a very sort of parochial view right. um, of things, and it's all about your community. And right. then going to the county, it's like, well, now it's regional government. Right. And, and where do we fit? Where does San Bernardino County fit in, within the Inland Empire, the two-county yeah. region, Riverside and San Bernardino County? And then, of course, moving along to the state, realizing that now it's not just the, the, the two counties, but it's the entire state. The principles, though, are the same. You know, make sure that you're that, that you're taking care of constituents. Make sure that the the budget is balanced. Right. And ultimately, just maximizing value for the people that you serve. What about though in Yucca Valley? Is it a five member council? It is five member council. So Yucca Valley five member council, board of supervisors five, five members. members. Yeah. Sacramento, 120, 80 in your house. Right. So, they, and that's that. That is the, the key. Right. There's 80 in one house, 40 in the other. So, even trying to build relationships, you know, on the whether it's the uh, a city council or if it's sure. the board of supervisors, there's only five people. You have to build relationships right. with those with those five people. It's difficult trying to build relationships with 80 just right. in the assembly, let alone um, trying to build relationships with the other um, 40. And also, both the city council and the board of supervisors, nonpartisan. Yeah. And if you look at San Bernardino, my perception is that board of supervisors really is a nonpartisan body. I mean, it is, absolutely. Th they seem to get along fairly yeah, well with do. all the problems behind them. They do. So how is it in Sacramento, you're part of the, quote, minority party. Yeah. How do you work to try to navigate to have your voice heard? You know, work with your fellow Democrats, also work with your Republicans, serve your constituents. Yeah, you know, it's, it, I mean, look, I've, I've only been there really since uh, I got fair. elected in December, right. got sworn in January. We've really only voted on one bill oh, um, as, as of okay. now, We've, some resolutions. But really, in fact, the thing that's been fascinating to me is, is how open um, the, the Democrats have been in trying well, to build to relationships hear. with Republicans, as well as Republicans trying to build relationships with mm -hmm. Democrats. Now, again, to be fair, we haven't gotten through the heat of the <laughs> right, legislative right, session, sure, sure, sure. and maybe those relationships will, be, will begin to change. But, but as of now, I think there's, a, there's an openness. I also think that the term limits, you know, we went what? from having um, a maximum of six-year terms uh, to now having a maximum of 12-year um, terms. Right. So the folks that are there now, knowing that they might be there for a longer period sure. of time, I think they're invested. Really, they're invested, and they right. want to be able to build solid relationships. With so folks. you mentioned heat, yeah. And I must talk about the heat. Yeah. That is the Forty Second Assembly District. Yeah. It is hot where you live. It is. Yeah. And with that heat, we know comes a lack of rain. Yeah. And so I want to get a sense from you about how you, your constituents, and your colleagues in Sacramento are facing the drought. Yeah. Because you know the headlines are scary. They're yeah. scary. One year of water left. I don't know if that's true, but that's what we hear. Yeah. Talk to us about the drought. You know, I think the one thing you have to know about water and water yeah. policy is that uh, what happens in Northern California is not the same thing that happens in Southern California. Right. 
even within the 42nd Assembly District, I think we've got uh, we've got over 10 um, water districts. I think the number is, wow. uh, is, is actually close enough, whatever, close enough yeah, yeah. whatever it is, whatever the number is. Uh -huh. uh, but from Ukaipa to even in the Coachella Valley, the needs are different. Um, the, they uh, are. I was talking to um, a uh, management at, at Coachella Valley Water District the other day, and he said we have enough water here in our aquifer that could be up for 100, 100 years. Um, in other parts of the district, wow. um, it could be only five or six years. So I think it depends. Now, statewide, uh, the problem that we have is that we're at the end of the f uh, four years of drought. Right. And when you've got hopefully the end. Hopefully. <laughs> right. Well, let's hope the end. But right. when you've got four years of drought, it could be five years of drought. It could right. be six years of drought. It's absolutely important that when we have those rainy years, and we do have those, th those years of tremendous rain, that we have enough storage um, to be able to balance off those years of drought. And let's talk about storage. Yeah. I've said this before. When I was a kid, the word storage for Democrats, dirty word. It's not a dirty word anymore. It I mean, the be. Democrats are talking about storage, as are the Republicans. Yeah. So there seems to be bipartisan consensus on some form of increased storage. You know the bond passed yeah. in November, the water bond, Prop yeah. 1. And so we have this pot of $7.5 billion, not all for storage, but yeah. a good chunk. The governor recently offered up a $1 billion drought relief bill, a lot of that bond money, but be that as it may. So where are we on building more storage? It won't help us at this moment, but we've got to start somewhere. Well, and that's the thing is ultimately you know, the Republicans had argued um, to, to get as much storage in that bond as possible. Right. That's what the fight was, is going mm -hmm. from $2 billion up to $3 billion of that to be a huge storage. And it happened. And, it happened. Right. and so, the, of course, it's going to take time to actually build those, those facilities. That isn't going to help us right. today, um, but we have to build that for the future. You know, when you think about financial management, I was beyond my, um, my, right. my, my time on the council, I was a f uh, financial advisor. Got it. When you think about financial reserves, right. so those, you have a rainy day fund. So let's talk about a rainy day fund. <laughs> yeah, how about when water? you think about water, you yeah. need a rainy day fund when it comes to water. And that's what that storage is. We need to have enough storage but, for those years of, of drought. And I think there's bipartisan consensus on that. Yeah. But what about today? I mean, sir, I, it's a little spooky. I got to be honest with you. Yeah. It's a little spooky. My daughters get spooked. I was up in Reading recently at Lake Shasta. I don't oh, know if you've been there. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And you it, see the pictures. Yeah. I, I mean, it looks lunar. The pictures, yeah. That's the way I described it. It looked lunar. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, what do we do today? We conserve. Okay. I mean, the answer is um, we, we we use as much. Every individual in California, every family in California, every business in California right. has got to make sure that that when they turn the tap on, do you absolutely need that water uh, to be turned on? So for today, what we have to do is we've got to conserve. So if those folks that are at home watching right. us, conserve. Think about conserve. Turn the water off, of course, when you're brushing your teeth. All right. those things that we learned in, um, in school, we've got to be doing that. Is it time, though, sir, to start with stronger measures, more punishing members that are measures that if you are watering when you shouldn't, you will be fined. Do we need to start considering well, those but, options? But if you're going to do that, that, those decisions, I think, need to be done at the local level. Mm. Like I said, I think uh, the, the, even in my district, right. uh, the needs of the Coachella Valley right. are different than the needs of those in the, in the San Jacinto Valley, different than the Morongo Basin, mm -hmm. different than the pass area. So if we're going to have a, govern, a government mm -hmm. mandate, I'm not sure that the one-size-fits-all approach that comes from Sacramento is really the way um, to, to manage that. Again, if it gets to the point to where there's just not enough water, um, then we're going to have to do what we're going to have to do. But I think that those those restrictions need to need, need to go need to come from the local level. Do you feel as if, with the recent bipartisan announcement on this drought relief bill, that? Sacramento is really rallying together to resolve this issue, or is it just a lot of jockeying? And yeah, no, I mean I think there's no doubt. I think both, like I said, both Republicans and Democrats understand um, the weight um, of this situation, and I think that um, just like when you saw the water bond uh, pass, it was both Republicans and it Democrats. Was. Um, that that was a bipartisan bill to get that um, to get that thing on the ballot, and ultimately the people of California, in a bipartisan way, uh, supported it. I think that's the same thing when it comes to water. We've got to think about this and. In, in a bipartisan way. But let's be real, we don't have that storage capacity today. We don't have that infrastructure today. I think some, some folks in the past, um, decision makers in the past, um, you know, didn't go down the road. Uh, well, did, hopefully didn't the we'll get that, that resolved. To be done. His name is yeah. Chad Mays. He is a member of the California State Assembly. My name is Brad Palmer. It's Charter California Edition.